Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about things you should consider before you make your next investment in some big fancy food preparation gadget. It doesn't matter if it's an Instapot, an electric canner, an all-American canner, a big fancy grain mill, a Vitamix blender, a KitchenAid, a freeze dryer, a dehydrator, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is that you're considering out there, let's just stop for a minute and weigh out some of these costs. Because one thing you have to remember is just because a channel like myself, who does have a couple of rather expensive food preparation things on hand, such as my All-American Canner and my Country Living Grain Mill, I weighed out these costs for a long time before I actually made the investment. Because especially the Country Living Grain Mill, that was a pretty big expense. I could have settled for something that was a lot cheaper. But when I looked at what my needs were for both the current time and for the future, that ended up being the best investment for me. But that may not be the best investment for somebody else. I do recommend having a grain mill of some kind, but there's much cheaper ways to go. Now, I did do a video where I broke down specific things like the grain mill, the canner, and blenders that I'll go ahead and link to down below. I did it a few months ago, but this one I want to just focus in, generally speaking, on any of these things because it seems like there's always some new big gadget coming out. You like the Instapot, and I don't know how expensive they are. They might not be that expensive. I personally have no interest in one, I've never bothered, so I've never bothered to look at the cost. It's just not something I need or desire. But what's happening is a lot of people get out there and they, t they get something new, they're excited about it, and if it's a channel you follow, and that might be the perfect item for them, and they might just be totally over the moon in love with that item, and it's exactly what they needed for their food preparation, and that's great. However, you should never allow what somebody else's choice is, be it mine or anybody else's, affect the decision you make that's best for you, and you should never feel guilted into it. And I tend to see a lot of this going on, though I know most channels mean well, and they're just excited about what they have, because I've done that too, and they're excited about what it's done for them and what they've been able to do with it it still doesn't mean that you should feel guilted into buying that product, be it through their link or whatever. It doesn't mean you're not a serious food preparer simply because you don't get that particular product. And I say that because someone had happened to ask, what's the best dehydrator, can you tell me? Well, somebody came in and said, for serious dehydrators, you need to get a, an Excalibur. Well, I'm sure that person meant well, but the problem with statements like that is what if that person can't afford to invest that kind of money into a dehydrator? Maybe that particular dehydrator with all the plastic parts isn't going to be what they are looking for. Maybe the size of the Excalibur is just too much to what their limited space can afford. But at any of these things, even if you really want that item, another thing to remember is look second hand. A lot of times people buy things like that thinking they're going to get serious into food preservation and then they never do. And then they turn around and sell a practically brand new unit just like those two de Nesco dehydrators. Looking at them, they look like they've either never been used or hardly ever been used. $3 and $5. So $8, I got two like new dehydrators. So just keep your eyes open for stuff like that. Facebook market, even though a lot of people just even, including myself, can really hate Facebook, it does have its benefits. And so if you're looking for something more local to you, Facebook market is a really great place to look. There's also Craigslist. You've got eBay, but a lot of times things are going to be even more expensive on eBay. Just be very careful at who you're buying from. I say one thing about Facebook market, if you can try to look locally at least, and meet with people in person, you'll know it's, you know, you're not going to get scammed. This is important. Don't send money to someone you don't know. And you know, I've been talking a lot about 
freeze dryers and I wanted one for a while but the more I looked into it the more I kept thinking I don't think it's for me I don't think I need it I took time to try out some different freeze-dried foods that I got through Mother Earth products so some I love like you know the freeze-dried raspberries and pineapple and a few other things other ones I really don't like it's not because of that product brand it's because of I don't like the flavor and texture that it turned out when it was freeze dried where other things I love but those other things I love I could easily live without if I didn't have access to them anymore so I'm totally cool with that and most of those are things I would still have to buy at the store and it's unlikely things like pineapple will be available to us because it doesn't grow here so I'd rather look at dehydrating and putting up things that I can grow myself for when those times come where I can't I don't have access to that stuff anymore it's like the whole idea of the freeze dryer a lot of you have been following me for just a little while at least will know that I've been doing a lot of experiments with dehydrating to find out can this be done just as well with a dehydrator? Things I hadn't thought of before or had considered but never tried, such as dehydrating milk, dehydrating cheese, and dehydrating eggs. And found that at least with those three things, whole milk, raw eggs, there's a reason for that, keeping them raw, by the way, and cheddar cheese and, and dehydrating it so that I can see how well that works that way, whether it be something I want to do for myself, like the eggs for certain, or I want to share with people if they're wanting to dehydrate these things like they have goats or cows and they're wanting to find another way to put up their milk besides just canning and freezing it. Well, dehydrating really does work. You do not have, a, have to invest in a freeze dryer to make that work for you. It might be the choice for you if you prefer that, but it may not if you can't afford it or you'd rather just use your dehydrator. And by the way, you can dehydrate milk and uh, 12 to 14 hours so it, it takes just as long to dehydrate milk and eggs as it does pretty much anything else any other fruit vegetable or meat a little side note there but that's my point is don't run out and invest in a freeze dryer if you can't afford it and you're not really even sure it's going to be the best choice for you especially if you don't even know if you like freeze dried foods so looking at things like some of these newer gadgets like for example the instapot I finally made an investment several years ago in getting a new slow cooker. I'd lived without one for years and thought, well, maybe having a slow cooker would be handy so that in the summertime we have lots of solar power, but no fire going in the wood stove, then I can do the same thing in my slow cooker that I can do on my wood stove. Well, I think I've used it once in the several years I've had it. It's beautiful, and I guess I'm glad I have it on hand, but now I'm kind of like, that was sort of a... A wasteful investment and the reason why is because when we've got solar power coming in I pull out my solar oven and use that instead but I could still use the slow cooker if if we had enough solar power yet it wasn't a real sunny day so I could still fall back on that so I know it's still a good thing to have on hand but really I could have lived without it and with that being said here's the other thing is when you're looking at investing in any of these things, it doesn't matter if it's a big fancy blender or even just a simple oster like I love. I have no interest in a Vitamix personally, but somebody else might find a Vitamix will solve several things. It'll be, it can be their grain mill and their blender and a couple other things. So it might be worth it to spend the three, four, five hundred dollars, whatever it is these days on a Vitamix. To me, two oasters for under sixty dollars i've got a backup and i have one here that's been lasting me for at least a good 15 years i'm thinking i'm getting closer to 20 now so it's just to me it's not worth it but anyway uh what i was trying to get to is looking down the road what's going to happen if you have all these electric gadgets you have an instapot rather than a solar oven yes a solar oven or cooking on a wood stove will take longer to cook in than an instapot but what's the point if you don't have power to run the Instapot? But you can have sun in the summertime and a wood stove in the wintertime. And that's the, I always slow cook my roasts and chickens and stuff. And I, I have no idea how they turn out in an Instapot. I just know they turn out great in the solar oven or on the wood stove. And that's what I fall back on. And then if I don't have enough sun to run the solar oven, or the slow cooker and no fire in the wood stove i have a toaster oven that works great for roasts casseroles and more and uses up a le less electricity than my range and i could run that 
easily enough off of our one of our fuel generators if I didn't have enough solar power to run it. So I have all these backup things. So these are the things that you got to think of. Not everybody can afford to have a solar power setup. They are expensive. It was something we invested in a little bit at a time here and there, especially once we got the house paid off. We had a little more money freed up, but we could start doing that. The same goes with any of this other stuff. I've bought some invested in a few things that like like that slow cooker that it'll be nice if I really need it, but I kind of wish that I would have put my money elsewhere. So what's going to happen if you have all these electric things, you know, an electric canner, an Instapot, fancy electric blender, and so on and so forth, or even a big fancy dehydrator, but you have no power source to run these things. What I would suggest is if you have the money to invest in all that stuff right now, you're, you're all out of debt and you're looking at, okay, I've got money to spend here, then sure, invest in what you think is going to be best for you. But if you don't have the money, maybe you need to step back and say, well, instead of getting a big fancy KitchenAid, what can I do with something as simple as a hand mixer like this or an egg beater? I use this thing a lot. In fact, I use this far more than I ever do my handheld electric mixer. I like this little thing. I can whip up eggs with it and make a meringue. I can make whipped cream with it. I've done it many times. The only thing I prefer having the electric mixer for, at least so far, is when I've got a big, huge batch of potatoes that I'm mashing up and I'm wanting to get them real smooth. I can use this if I have to, but it's a lot quicker having that electric mixer and it's just a cheap little handheld one that's lasted me for many years, yet again. So I don't need another big fancy mixer sitting on my counter taking up even more of my precious space. So the other thing I was going to say is, especially when it comes to some of these newer gadgets that you're seeing coming out, that a lot of people are buying up and going, oh, this is great, I love it. And maybe they really do, but remember the bread makers, the electric bread makers from what, about 20 years or so ago? I never bought one, I was never interested. And what happened? A whole bunch of people went out and bought them everybody had a bread maker and then what happened not long after that every garage sale you went to oh look another bread maker oh look another bread maker oh look another bread maker same thing happened with those big old fancy pasta makers now getting just a little simple stainless steel one like the one i picked up for three dollars brand new at a garage sale where you can just do some really basic noodles those are very nice but you can still live without that there's such thing as a rolling pin and a knife or even a bicicletta which is a multi-bladed instrument that you can use to just cut your noodles into strips like that once you have it rolled out and make it quick so you're not having to can hand cut each one and that makes them all the same size weigh out all the costs find out if it's going to be worth it to you and your family would it be better for you to take that four hundred dollars or four thousand dollars or whatever the cost of that item is and maybe an invest it in something more like a backup power source you know like a generator to me that sounds like a better investment to go for first than to spend that kind of high dollar on something that you could probably live without when there's other methods so let's come back to the freeze drying versus dehydrating again is that dehydrating was good enough for people for thousands of years and freeze dryers are relatively new Yet people were dehydrating without electric dehydrators. They didn't have Excaliburs and Nescos and Casoris and Cabela's and all these different dehydrators are, that are out there. They did things using the power of the sun to dehydrate much of their fruits and vegetables and meats and that worked good for them. The reason someone like me would, you know, yeah, I got some good deals on dehydrators and then decided to go ahead and get another electric dehydrator. And the reason that's nice for me is simply because for my certain situation, with all the herbs and stuff I have coming in in the summer, I can run these things off of solar power and get a whole bunch done at once. Whereas I have to, if I had to air dry everything, especially in our humidity, 
it would take way too long and I would have trays and things hanging all over the place. So to me, it's worth it. It's worth the investment, but it might not be worth it to someone else who maybe doesn't like a lot of dehydrated foods and only wants to dehydrate maybe a few herbs. You could probably, you probably live in a dry enough climate. You can just hang your herbs in some special places and it can even look sort of nice. Like if, if you've checked out Homestead Tessie, and I think it's in her canyon shed, she's got herbs hanging up and it can look really nice and just make it homey and it's a way you can dry your stuff that doesn't cost you any more money no money invested in any special equipment no money invested in the electricity it takes to dry those things so it's all going to depend on what you're doing and by the way when it comes to making beef jerky i whenever i do that i only do it in the winter time because I like doing that one on top of my wood stove with the rack that Patrick built for me out of some old bed rails that he collects for free and he welded it all together and then we just bought the stainless steel racks at our local store down here to go with it and it was it's been great in fact he built me two of them and then the other thing is if you really need something like blenders are pretty handy things to have way out the cost is it going to be worth it to you to spend x amount of dollars on this big fancy blender here when for a quarter of the price you can get yourself two blenders that may apply to dehydrators that may apply to mixers or anything else so just because someone is very sold on their very expensive item and all the things it does for them it might not be the choice for you especially if you can't afford it you might just be better off going with a cheaper item same thing goes with the grain mill you might be better off taking that money and going ahead and getting that vitamin vitamix that can do all this other stuff as well don't just listen to one voice you might love them they might and they, like i said I, i'm not trying to put any one channel down and we all are going to have our things that we just really love our gadgets that we love i know i do but that doesn't mean that gadget is right for you. So weigh out everything that you hear different people saying and then ask yourself, okay, if I get this, am I only gonna use it once a year, twice a year? How often am I actually gonna use it? How serious am I going to be about always grinding my own flowers? Would it be better for me to just go ahead and stock up on some pre-ground flour? or to just go with something that costs a lot less. And then again, considering the fact that if it's an electric gadget, you're going to need to have a power source to run it. So if you don't have any kind of gas or diesel generator or solar power to run these things, if you lose power down the road, around here we have power outages all the time. It's just par for the course when you live where we are. Other point I wanted to make, I have things like this. The only food processor I have is this, a hand crank, just cheap food processor that I only use a few times a year, but I'm not gonna invest in a big, fancy, expensive electric food processor when this right here is gonna do enough for me. So I think about all these things. I think about how am I gonna set myself up so that when there's no power and I still need to get this thing, this stuff done, this is why I have no interest in an electric canner. I love my setup. I have my All-American canner that I run off of propane outside most of the time. Sometimes I'll do it inside if it's really, if I end up having to do some canning in the winter, that's important to me. I, and I love my setup. I absolutely love it. I have no interest in an electric canner. Somebody else might. And there's also nothing wrong if you can afford the money and the space having one of each. Just like I have a few electric dehydrators, I also have the dehydrator that really cost us very little other than the cost of the stainless steel racks that we use in it that I can use on or near my wood stove. I have the non-electric hand mixer, but I also have the electric one if I really need it. But if we don't have power, I have this. I'm used to using it. And that's the other thing. If you do invest in any of that stuff, especially anything that's non-electric and you just have it as a backup in case the power goes out, it's still a good idea when things are not real tough, you got power, to start practicing with this kind of stuff first instead of having to fall back on it when you really need it and things are already very stressful. The same thing goes with learning how to use any of your freeze-dried or dehydrated foods. Don't just put that stuff away and then have to fall back on it in emergency. Start using it now and rotating through it so you know the many ways and how best to cook with it and use it. So I'm always working through dehydrated foods. 
uh, you, you know, whether it be ones I stock up on, like the powdered milk and the powdered butter, I use these things pretty much every day instead of relying on fresh milk for everything. And I'm very comfortable with it because of that. It's just really important that you get familiar with any of this stuff and how you're gonna do anything off grid if you lose power, which is very likely you will at some point, whether it be for a day or a week, a month, who knows. For cooking sources, instead of running out and buying a slow cooker, an Instapot, or even a solar oven, before you invest in that, I would say your number one best investment when it comes to that is going to be a wood stove. It's going to be far more expensive than those particular things. Maybe about the same price of them all put together though. It doesn't have to be a big fancy expensive kitchen cook stove. It can just be a flat top wood stove like we have that we have in our living room. We replaced the old, we took out the old fireplace and insert and stuff and put in a wood stove that would fit in there with a nice flat top so I have lots of cooking surfaces and the reason I say this is because a wood stove is one of the number one best investments if you can afford the money and space because it has so many uses you can cook and bake on it which I do all the time once when we have a fire going it can be used for hanging your laundry in front of to dry which I do all the time as long as there's a fire going it can, and then of course it's used for heating your house and it's used for dehydrating things and making jerkies and so on. So there's a lot that you can do with just that one thing. And that's why I say invest in something like that first because that's going to be the thing you're going to fall back on when there's no power to heat your house and cook your food and dry your clothes. Then if you have something like that already in place, then you can start looking at this other stuff. Anyway, these are just my recommendations. I'm not trying to tell you what's best or right for you. I'm What I'm trying to encourage people to do is weigh out all the costs, weigh out the kind of space these things are gonna take up, weigh out the type of maintenance these are, things are gonna take and the cost involved in keeping up on them, the cost of energy to run these things, if is it gonna be worth it to get an Instapot when maybe it'd be better for you to get a solar oven that uh, once you have the investment, it doesn't cost you anything to run it. There's no maintenance to do other than cleaning it now and then. So I think I covered all the points I wanted to cover in this video. Any other thoughts, recommendations of products that maybe that you know, it doesn't matter what it is, that you feel are a really good investment that have worked for you, whether it be a low cost product or a high cost product, even if it's an Instapot. I might not have any interest in Instapot, but maybe there'll be somebody else that will come in through comments and read what you have to say about about yours, what in, whether or not it was worth the expense. Share all these things so people can weigh out what's best for them. This is where we're gonna get the best information, not just somebody who has a YouTube channel or a blog, and they might have 160,000 subscribers or a million subscribers and everybody's following them and people want to buy that product just because that person has it. It shouldn't be that way. You shouldn't get something just because I say or anyone else says. Listen to what they have to say, listen to what they share and how it works for them, and then weigh out the cost for you. And by the way, one more thing, your location is gonna play a big part too in some of these items. Is it worth it to get a solar oven in a place that hardly gets any sun like us? I wasn't sure at first, but I love it. Even though we don't get to use it as much as Doug and Stacy get to use theirs, it was still worth it for us to go ahead and get that solar oven. And I use it every summer. Not as much as I would like, but I still get to use it every summer and it's fun. And it's just something I can stick food out there on a hot day and I don't have to worry about heating out up the house. So to me, that was worth it. That might not be worth it to somebody else who lives in a place like ours that doesn't get very much sun. So weigh out all of these different things. Okay, now I think I really did cover everything. So please share your comments down below so everybody can learn from you as well. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check the links I'll put in the description box down below. Read those comments, share your stories, and let's keep a strong community going here. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.